What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, please subscribe. In this one, we're gonna talk about why katas in judo make you better at shiai. So shiai is a competition, it's fighting, right? And well, there's katas in judo. Yeah, so for those of you guys who know, there is, I think it's important to most people don't even touch on the kata until much later uh, when it's time to get their black belt. Like myself, I'm a brown belt, guys, and uh, I have to learn the kata. And I started learning the kata, and then all of this happened, and well, a couple of things happened prior to that. I had to change clubs, club closed down, and then transitioning, and so that, but then, boom, COVID. But I was about to learn the kata. Now, the reason why, and I've been told this before, and I wanted to make this video to, for a lot of guys, oh, we just wanna fight, like, screw the kata. I'm just here to fight, man, I don't care about that. Yeah, but if you get good at the kata, you will become a better fighter. And the reason for that, and it makes sense, and I was told this by one of my uh, old coaches, I forgot who exactly. When you think about it, it's, it's, it's a way of transmitting information, <laughs> passing it down from generation to generation, and it's a very good way. Like, it's good to have books and drawings and stuff like that, if we only did that, pass on a book and a drawing, I mean, everybody, it's subject to interpretation. Already when you, if, even if I say it, it's even worse. When you learn kata, you're learning the way it was invented and why it was invented. And let's agree, the Japanese are very sophisticated, very refined culture in the way they do things, the samurais and stuff like that. So they knew what the hell they were doing when they came up with all of this. It's very detailed, very technical. So it's important to have these little nuances, these little details. Of course, you have to adapt it afterwards for your, um, for, for your own body type and your own style. And obviously competition, you know, it's very different. You know, we have to uh, adjust everything for competition. But by knowing the original techniques, you understand and learning the katas, because the katas is not you doing it alone, right? It's not just one dude like in Kung Fu, oh, oh. Whoa. You're not just waving around your arms and legs, which is kind of cool. In, in, in judo, you got two dudes. Sorry, not four. This is four. Sorry. Two dudes. Two dudes. Uh, two judokas, uh, Uke and Tori, and tick, tick, and they come. One guy goes, ah, the other guy goes, ah, like, ah, dude, ah. He punts it. Right? And then you, from there, that's when you understand where this comes from. Uh, distance wise because you know like like judo comes from jiu-jitsu which is the martial art of the samurai and a lot of it had to do with somebody trying to stab you with a dagger you know this way this way you know or you know with a big sword you know so like you had to you know have you have to understand the timing why you do this why you do this why you do this why you pull ta -ta -ta -ta, you know so there's a lot of great details there that help you understand why the technique was developed the way it was technique, why the original technique is the way it is. It allows you afterwards to, to understand the, the principles of it. And then you can pretty much reteach that and adapt that to whoever uh, you want to coach later on. I heard this from other like judokas, you know, as I train out and, and some of them were like, ah man, that's bullshit. Don't do it like that. Do it like this, do it like this. Ah, you know, this is the way it really works in competition. And that's true. That's true for them. And that could be true for me too, <clears throat> All, you know? To, to, to varying degrees, the traditional form, there's a reason behind it. And once you start doing the katas, you understand it at a deeper level. That's why it makes you better at Shi'ai. So it's, you know, because you're learning why it was uh, uh, developed the way it was developed. The ideas, the fundamentals behind it, the reasoning, the logic behind it. I don't have very good examples at this point because I don't know the kata, but that's what I was told. And I remember when I started practicing the, like, I, 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 things started clicking in my mind, like, I was like, okay, that's why they do it like this. That's, that's why they do it like that, 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 that. There's reasons. And you know, in the kata, like you're, you're, you have to do it both sides. And that was interesting too. It's like, you have to be able to coordinate both sides. You can't be falling down on your ass and rolling over the guy when you throw him, right? Not like in competition, you don't care. You're just trying to score points, but like you don't go to the ground in real life on the battlefield as a samurai. I'm looking here because I have, anyways. That's it for this video, guys. I hope it made sense. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. 
Also, there's a link down below. If you guys click on it, it's gonna bring you to a page where you could follow me on all my social media platforms and you can also apply for, uh, for coaching so that you guys can work directly with me. Also, one last thing guys, if you have any questions, right, send me an email. That's the best way to reach me. I read them and I'll, I'll answer your, your questions, man. All right, peace.